Hi, welcome back. So for the past couple of months you've seen me working out in my garage. And while it's been okay, now the time has finally come to turn it into an actual workshop. So I will do this in a couple of steps. And the first step is to care of the right side where I have my workbenches. And while the workbenches aren't that great, the main reason is because I don't have any storage space at all. So right now, 90% of my tools and equipment are just stacked up in boxes in a small storage space in the back side of the garage, or the back room of the garage. So the plan is to tear out everything on this side, tear down the wall, put up some extra insulation, some OSB, and then drywall finally. And when the drywall is done, not along the entire wall, because I still need some floor space or want some floor space close to the door here, but along most of the wall, and that will give me a lot of storage space, both beneath the bench and up top on the wall. And when that's done, I can finally get all my tools and equipment out of storage. And that means I have a lot more storage space as well for other stuff. So this would be the official before video and I'll take it for two in a second. Uh, and after that, let's start tearing stuff down. So let's start over here. Here we have my improvised painting booth, one of the squat racks. And as we go around, uh, so here you see my two workbenches, and this is the side we're going to start with. So we'll move everything out of the way, tear down the wall, and then rebuild it. And my plan is to... Oh, those lights are really bad. Let me just... Ah, yeah. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so the workbench will go from this edge here, in an L shape, all the way to around here somewhere, I think. So I'll still have this floor space. And here on the other side, and here on the other side we have my weightlifting area. And when all is said and done, that will be over here instead. So here we have my storage space. And as you can see, I have barely enough place to move. And there are boxes and tools and junk everywhere. And if I play my cards right, and I think I will, Everything that's stored here, or at least 90% of it, will fit underneath the bench here. And all the tools will be either in drawers or up on the wall. And that means I can move this entire weightlifting platform over here instead. And uh, that's not possible right now. So I think that's it really. It's not that big. But uh, with some clever thought and some hard work, we should be able to make this into something really awesome. So let's get going!
So somewhere around here, you might start asking yourself, why is it just tearing into the drywall? Is it going to reduce it or something? Um, yes, yes I am. And I have two, in my mind, quite good reasons for doing so. The first reason is that this drywall is, is actually in quite good shape. I mean, they haven't used any... any gypsum or, or spackle or anything. And the second reason is that according to fire code in Sweden, if you have two layers of drywall, you can have it classified as a fireproof installation or a fireproof building. And I won't classify it right away, but I want the option in the future if I need to. And using and using this existing drywall as the first layer would save me both money and time in doing so. And honestly, it's not that much work either because they only use like... Uh, oh, let me count. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve screws per sheet of drywall.
So just a quick word about the way I'm building this. As you might have seen, first of all I have a vapor barrier, then the EPS installation that's expanded polystyrene, not extruded polystyrene, there's a difference. Uh, then OSB and drywall on top of that. And if you want to build anything, everything is of course done at your own risk, so don't blame me if anything goes wrong. But this expanded polystyrene has some really great qualities that makes it almost perfect for use in an environment like a garage. Uh, so first of all, it's non-hygroscopic, meaning it doesn't absorb moisture. So I can put it right up against the, uh, the concrete floor if I want to. Now, I do have the vapor barrier here, but I could put it right up against the concrete if I wanted. And second of all, it doesn't act as a vapor barrier in itself. So this insulation breathes, which isn't necessarily true about expanded polyurethane, you know, like spray foam insulation, at least as far as I understand it. So that's two of the main reasons why I chose this insulation. And the third and fourth reason is that it's really easy to work with. It's easy to cut, easy to shape in any way you want. And it doesn't itch at all like traditional glass fiber insulation or rock wool insulation. Rock wool not so much, but glass fiber definitely. So let's crack on with it. So this is taking way too long, but I have a trick I'm going to show you. Just hang on. Okay. So one and a two and a... So a lot's happened since we last spoke. I know that for you guys it's only been a couple of seconds, but in real life it's been around six weeks since the previous clip. And this project has taken way, way longer than I originally planned. I planned to have it wrapped up in maybe two, three weeks, but like I said, six weeks later. Now a big part of this it's actually that I started a new job and it's been kind of hectic and kind of fun at the same time but still a lot of stuff to do and the other reason is that I made a really bad decision when it came to the paint on these walls I got some paint that in hindsight was way too cheap and I figured that hey I know this paint is bad but if I only need to put on maybe one or two more coats of paint, it should still be okay. However, after both a layer of primer and then five layers of paint, it was still wasn't covering the wall completely. So I went back to the drawing board, sanded down everything, got some good quality paint, and then repainted the wall. And if nothing else, at least it taught me a valuable lesson. Never buy cheap paint. And even though it led to this wall not being as perfect as I would have liked, it still ended up okay. And I think it will be mostly me that can see the flaws. So here it is in all its glory. Now there's still some things left to do, mainly to put up some trim towards the floor and ceiling. But I think I'm going to do that off camera. There's really nothing interesting about seeing guy putting up trim. But then again, there's really not that much interesting about seeing guy putting up drywall and painting either. And I hope at least some of you watched it. So that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed and till next time.